magic glass. You're just like me. Dude, she's fucking hot. Fuck you! All right, woo! Welcome back to Death Curse Society. We're here at the Oklahoma City Horror Con. I'm Red Crank, I got Zigzag, and oh my God, I'm so excited. Miss Danielle Harris is here with us from the Halloween series and many other films. You're going to be thrilled. Bill, if you want to jump in and say hey, come on. All right, we'll see you tonight though. Anyway, so Danielle, loving Oklahoma again? Of course, yeah, I love Oklahoma City. Excellent. Ziggy, won't you get us started on Let's the question? Let's get right to it, because we know we got to get going here. People are coming. They want to see the queen, man. That's right. A <laughs> um, couple of years ago, we already did it. We touched on this Friday night at the, at the screening. Uh, we recently found out Phil Rudd was actually approached to rejoin the Halloween universe, reprising Tommy Doyle. Oh, and, yeah? Yeah. You know, and so, how's that feel? I mean, what, what the hell? How, how does that work, but bringing back Jamie Lloyd doesn't work? I think because they're still sticking to the fact that four and five didn't exist yet. So it kind of, well, I don't know. You know, you know? It's, it's odd. It, 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 it's inconsistent. At yeah, that. yeah. Paul Rudd was in six. Paul Rudd so was in six. That's right. I mean, now I understand. Interesting. And I started arguing, like, well, wait, but he was a small boy in the original, and then we were like, oh, hold on, four and five, hello. You know, she, yeah, no one's thing. come up right. to me yet, that's for sure. <laughs> Ridiculous. I wonder who's serialized. Peed in. <laughs> you know, and, and it sounded like he was ready to go, uh, yeah. but scheduling. So oh, man, started. I would yeah. love to work with him. I'd yeah. love to be in the movie, but, you know. All right, I remember hearing uh, several years ago in the 90s or 2000s that you were considered for the role of Julie James and I Know What You Did Last Summer. I was not, actually. You weren't? No. All right. Well, rumors. No, that, rumors, see, rumors. Busted. Rumors I, are awful. I did uh, screen test against Nev Campbell for The Craft, though. Ooh. Mm, okay. Uh, see, there's some... See? Yeah. Hey. There's, so. uh, I'll change that on IMDb to be more accurate. There you time. go. Right? <laughs> All right. Um, in the past, you've tried your hand at directing with features uh, Prank in 2008, Among Friends in 2012. How is that different from actually doing the acting and being behind it in charge of everything? I mean, I think directing is more my speed. Yeah. I, I like to be part of the creative process, and as an actor, you're just kind of uh, a subcontractor, essentially. Gotcha. You know? I like to sort of be the supervisor, the, the actual contractor of the project. So I, I prefer to be behind the camera. I like being in front, too, depending on the role. I mean, it's, you know, more accountability, I think, behind yes. it as a director. Too, yes, for sure. It's more fun. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's nice to learn something, you know, feeding your brain creatively. And acting, depending on the role, it's kind of like I've done it so much that, and I keep getting cast kind of as the same sort of character. Right. So it's nice to do something different. Um, outside of horror, earlier this year, um, you were able to return to the role of Molly Tilden in yeah. The Connors, yes. um, a role you had originated nearly 30 years prior. Was walking onto that set with those actors, like stepping back in time, and what else can you tell us about yes, the experience? Yes, it was crazy, because um, it felt like yesterday, but then everybody looked so old. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, but you know, it's like when you see your, like, pictures of your, like you still picture everyone at the age that you spent the most time with them, and if you haven't seen them in so many years, when you revisit that, you're like, whoa, wow, time is going by, right. for sure. Um, it was really cool, uh, just to be back, I mean, I hadn't done a, a three camera show, or four camera show, in, since Roseanne. So it really? was my yeah wow. So it was my first time back, and you know, just my mom brain trying to remember all that dialogue, and and right. I had a lot of it, and uh, I was like, oh my god, I would get to work an hour early, just to make sure that I knew what I had to do. And then things change every day, and you know, but I was happy to at least have some closure with it. How was the what feeling did you have when you read? Holy shit, they're killing me. <laughs> I didn't know. You didn't know, really. I didn't know until I saw the second episode. I. The way I saw it was that I was giving her a ticket to go to Hawaii with me, and we were going to go to Hawaii together, and I was excited to come back for more stuff, and then I was like, oh, they killed me. Okay. Yeah. So that was news to me. It was a killer episode. It was um, good, right? Yeah. No, no pun well, intended. Okay, yeah. But um, it was, was a great like, episode. even kill me on sitcoms? Like, even like, you know, I was saying the other day, like, my Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Like, there's always some death in I, whatever I do, even if it's comedy. I don't know. It's, my life is weird. I loved it. That was probably my favorite episode of, of this oh, season. Thanks. So 
Did, um, it feel, fun. did it feel a little weird with Roseanne not being there? I mean, yeah, I mean, the show in general is weird without Roseanne. Yeah, it. yeah, it's well, not, yeah. It's not the same. It's a lot. It's got a lot uh, heavier of a tone I without agree. her there. It's a little. It could be a little bit depressing. But everybody's so good. I mean, Lori and John and Z, I mean, it, it really is a good show. We were kind of like, I don't know, me personally, I was like, this ain't gonna make it. I don't, I don't see it happening without your title characters yeah. now gone. You know, but hey, they're they doing it. They're the, writing it. The whole family. Yeah, they the love. writing's great. Yeah, and it works. Yep, yep. Kudos to Sarah for bringing it back. Um, I want to hit this a little bit. We recently you've been popping up on the internet because of the Tony Moran stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and we watched everything. We By the did, way, kudos yeah. to you for that. Thanks. Right. And we saw what you did and why, and we broke down the unmasking video, you know, and we found some edits to be a little bit unfair mm -hmm. in some of the text that was put around it. Tony said some things, but do you... I mean, do you really think that he's that bad of a guy? Like no, that? I mean, I, I don't think he's a bad guy. That was the whole point of it. I, but I think that the stuff that he said was horrible. Of course. I mean, but everybody has a moment like that. And like, yeah. I guess my question is, how long is he to be made to suffer before he's forgiven? Well, that's not up to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I can just lead the horse to water, essentially. True. True. And then it's up to him to, to do better. And you can forgive him and move on or hold a grudge and not come and support him. Your last video, I believe, he, he came across very genuine to me. I think he's yeah. been 100% genuine the yeah. entire time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he said a lot of really bad things, but, I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse, you right. know. Well, right, and, that, and that's the thing. You know, we knew that guy took some things out of context and, and just, you know, he said some bad enough things you don't need to pile on. That's kind yeah. of what our point was. He joined the show. We were, we were doing it live on a Monday. And right. I mean, in, you, you know, know, over the years, it depending on the day, he's been a loose cannon sometimes. Mm. But I, I you got him. People have to just move on. Agree. And there was no, you know, I saw someone posting something about, um, like, what? Did, why did I do it? What did I get out of it? And I was like, that's really interesting that people would think that I had to do something because I was getting something out of it. No. I actually no. wanted to. I just believe people are good people, and I just wanted it to stop. You know, I didn't want there to be. You know, and he said it. You don't. You don't fix hate with hate. Right. So I'm. I love Tyler. I. I don't have any yeah. qualms with with anybody. Um, I wasn't paid by anybody <laughs> to go do this. You know, by any means. So I just wanted to talk to him, and I had not seen the video that he made apologizing. So yeah. I didn't know, and I was just sitting there seeing him, and then seeing the fans, and going, you know, I'm gonna go ask him what's going on with that. Well, just, we'll, yeah. we'll explain one thing because the. The part where he is accused of calling all fans losers and nerds yeah, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. He's talking about one fan when he met him in 1995 mm. or whatever, or 2005, excuse yeah. me. And when he met him, he, he was just blown away about the fact that, why would you want to meet me? I yeah, was in the right. movie for three seconds. He didn't get this yet. He didn't no, understand this because right. he had never been to one. Yeah, now, that but, fan turned out being somebody that helped him get into conventions. Oh. And that fan ended up being Sean Clark, oh. who oh, I think later there was a oh I don't know anything about yeah. that. another conflict between oh. Sean Clark and Tony. Uh, um, I don't know anything about that. You but. know, it's a boys' club, but there's like all <laughs> kinds of shit. There's all kinds of drama between everybody that I am never a part of. So I don't know what but, goes on behind closed doors. Right, but that was the thing that I've. I didn't like about the Unmasked video was that, no, he's not talking about all fans. He's talking about one guy yeah. and trying to wrap his brain around why do you want to see me? Yeah. Why do you want to talk to me? The internet's you know. a wicked thing sometimes. It really is. Nope. We called him out live right. well, on the yeah, show. We just asked him, yeah. do you care to explain yourself? We know you're anonymous, but and, and he did. He wasn't even a total jerk to us. You know? yeah. We were asking, why'd you do that? Why'd you spin it that way? But it is what it is, and uh, I, I we do appreciate you yep. just stepping up to do that, you know, and just to just back a guy up, a comrade. You know, uh, you you know, know he just, I feel like he... He does deserve to be here, you know, whether he had five seconds in the movie or not. Um, he is the unmasked Michael Myers from the original Halloween, so, you know, part of it. he is part of it. So, you know, it's, it's if you don't want to buy his autograph or come meet him, then you don't have to. Right. There's probably some guy that used to make the sandwiches on the set of Halloween back in 78. Yeah, he's probably you like, want to hey, talk to. I worked on that movie. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? That's cool. Like, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's stories to tell. So I think it's awesome. We hope to run into him at some point because I've never met him personally. I'd love mm -hmm. to sit down and just tell him how much I admire him and all that. And then, right. you know, 
hopefully we can talk to him too someday. Yeah. He'd be, he'd be, I'm sure he'd be yeah. into it. Well, recently you wrapped production on the Host app, yes. which is scheduled for release in December, and currently working on Doctor Gift. Yes. Gift. Yes. Doctor Gift. Yes. What can you tell us about those projects and what to expect from your performances? I can tell you nothing. No. Damn it! Um, All right, we're done. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the host app. Uh, my friend Matt Passmore is the, the lead, and uh, Debbie Sheridan, who's mm-hmm. a female friend of mine, was, is directed and wrote. And um, it's uh, about quarantine life, you know, and an interesting twist on maybe what coronavirus was and how it came to us and how it can come through and so it's kind of a, a little a little interesting uh, uh, take on it um, I, I came on the last minute because their their lead bounced like the day before so I sort really? of swooped in there and, and tried to save the day but I'm glad I did because I think it was it, it's really good um, Dr. Gift I just did this week so I wanted to do something 80s and mm-hmm fun and you know kitschy and and i love texas and i was, I was like, gonna say that was shot in texas because i saw some yeah. uh, blood drenched photos oh, of yes. you oh yes um so i wanted to be part of that i wanted to play a character named cat she's like the lead singer of this 80s rock band mm, nice so i was like oh that i've done that before you know um and then i did a movie called uh stream that's really cool. Uh, that Felissa Rose and uh, Tony Todd and uh, Dee Wallace and oh, wow. Dave Sheridan and a lot of a lot of nice. people Alumni. were a, a, yeah a lot <laughs> were a part of. And um, I played a mom of, of a teenage daughter and a younger son, and I hadn't, uh, I hadn't done that before. So I was like, oh, I mean, I am in my mid forties. Like, I could very well have an eighteen-year-old <laughs> daughter. So, so that was really nice to kind of play the mom, which I hadn't really done yet. So that was really awesome. The guys that did Terrifier did that as well. So, oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, so there's all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and then I did a little part in a movie um, called uh, To Anne With Love that um, was a nice little little cameo. And then, let's see what else is going on. There's all there's other things in the work. So I just was kind just of, looking at your IMDb page, <laughs> yeah, and those were the out. few that were Yeah, the, those are the ones newish. that kind of the, the, the newest, <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. And working on my own content, you know, I've got my Patreon up, mm. which has been a really great way for me to connect with everybody. Um, during uh, quarantine, you know, I have movie nights, we do movie watch parties, and I've really gotten to know the fans on a different level, right. um, which we become friends and family, so yeah. it's it's nice. I'm, ex- I'm as excited to kn- get to know them as they are to get to know me, so it's been really rewarding and fulfilling, actually. When it's time to that. promote, yeah, when it gets time to promote these new projects, you yeah. know, we'll, we can have, love to have you on. We do a Monday night thing live, cool. and, and we have just that. It's an audience, and it's all about them. We just turn it right to them. Yeah, and let it's them nice. Talk, right? I mean, it's about the fans, you know, yeah. so, and the community, which I think we have a great one. Yes. None final. None final. Anything, you know. Music. For sure. This is the best. Horror people are the fucking coolest. Yes, that's true. Danielle. You, you recently oh, started what? doing a, uh, a podcast also. Yes, with, uh, with, Scout. with Scout. Yeah, so um, it's called Talk Scary to Me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've done a few episodes and our schedules are a little, cra- are a little crazy, so we're trying to continue to, to bank a bunch before we release. Okay. But it's right. kind of like a love line. Oh, so cool. it's sort of call in, leave messages, or send videos if you have questions about love, sex, or horror. Okay. And then we talk all kinds of scary, dirty stuff. That's not going to open the door to any weirdness no, whatsoever. No, no, of course not. You should see some of the questions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> where the scout healthy. and I are like, we can oh only my god, wow, geez, Louise. Um, but it's really fun, and uh, and I love her, and we've got a great rapport and, and a friendship, so I think it comes across. And uh, yeah, so we're doing that, and then I have my show, Common Terror, that I've, I've been doing that uh, is looking for a home now, and that's um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I'll show you the little trailer afterwards. Yeah, please. But it's uh, me sitting down with my horror friends in my house on my couch watching their movies that made them famous. Oh, cool. And most of them I haven't seen. So I've done 15 episodes um, so far. So it's like me me and Dee Wallace watching Cujo. Me and mm. Felissa watching Sleepaway Camp. Me and Nico watching Pet Cemetery. Oh me God. and Omri um, Katz watching Hocus Pocus. Me, so it's like a lot of, of that. And then I cut them down to 30-minute episodes. And it's really, really, really fun. Me sure. and Tom Holland See. watching Child's Play. Me, I mean, we've it's it's pretty fun. Shudder, pay when, attention. Is, Let's do yeah, this. When, when is this going to be? I have I have filmed it all. Uh, uh, and then I am just I've edited half of them so mm-hmm. far so I was doing it on my own dime which is where Patreon really came yeah. in mm-hmm. 
to help with that because um, it gets very expensive very, very fast. And so I stopped in the middle because I wanted to try to find a home knowing that a production company would probably come in and change everything anyway. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so I have two versions actually. Well, it could be three. I've got the half an hour version. I've got the full 90 minutes watch along. Mm -hmm. So you hear us talking about everything for the whole 90 minutes. And then I also can turn the 90 minutes it, and or 30 into essentially just podcast into audio where you can watch and listen at the same time. I've heard enough. This is a home run. Yeah. This is this is gonna work. It's really fun. It's my favorite thing that I've done in a long yeah. time. So it's it's because because you know when you've got two horror people watching movies, we're seeing different things. Oh yeah, yeah. the banter's got to be gold. Oh, it's yeah. it's different. And then you know there's sometimes like you guys don't know like it's hard to remember what to ask mm. about specific things. But when you're watching it, you're like, oh, what about? Mm. Oh, so I see that right there. Or, yeah. Oh my God, why didn't she? just open the door like why did she go why didn't she just reach over and when she's trying to get out the door this way and like you know Friday the 13th I'm like why did she she's busting the door but the window's open right. just climb out the window that way so it's fun it's fun banter right. and I got to find out how Kane Hodder lost his virginity and you know oh all of that fun stuff so that can't that, uh, that's got to be a good story Yes, they're all good. And you know, these are my friends. So right. you break down the wall. They don't feel like they're being interviewed because we're just hanging out, having a drink, watching a movie. Nice. So it's a very different um, vibe. It's like you're watching the movie with us. I, I love it. I can't wait. Yeah. Production companies, get on this shit. Come on, Shutter. man. Let's get it. Go, go to my YouTube channel and you can check it out. Yeah, definitely. See it now. Danielle, uh, thank you so much for letting us do this. Sure. Uh, joining the DCS. Of course. <laughs> we got more to come. We're at the OKC Horror Con. It's the last day. Daniel Harris, the queen, bow down. <laughs> DCS out. Woo!